Our product is to predict um, a mechanism for carathylene in acidic conditions. One of the um, products is carathylene. All right, so carathylene has two alkenes, which both function as nucleophiles. So uh, either this can attack or this can. However, this is a more substituted alkene. It's tertiary. One, two, three carbons. And then this is secondary right here. So to produce the more stable cation, we will carbocation, we will use this to attack. It will be a nucleophilic attack with the H, and the electrons from the hydrogen and oxygen bond will move to the oxygen. Okay, so now we have a molecule with a carbocation and an alkene. So this alkene is going to attack the carbocation intramolecularly, and it will form a bridgehead. This bridgehead can be in front, like drawn here, wedges, or uh, it can attack from the back when it would be uh, dashed. So it can be either. Both enantiomers are formed. And then, since right here, this carbon has uh, four carbons attached to it, and now right here, it only has three, uh, the, there is a carbocation formed right here. So right now, um, we have the carbocation right at the bridgehead. Uh, so we have a nucleophilic molecule, water, um, which is going to attack that carbocation, giving you this substituent, which has a positive charge. So for the last step, <laughs> um, a and in the last step, um, a water molecule attacks deprotonates this hydrogen, and the electrons from the, from the hydrogen-oxygen bond um, are transferred to the oxygen because it is more electronegative. And this yields our product, curanol. curanol. Our second product is clovine. All right, so uh, like before, we have our two alkenes again. And this is the alkene that attacks because it forms a more stable carbocation intermediate. So it's going to attack the hydrogen. Hydrogen, oxygen bond, electrons move to the oxygen. And we get a carbocation right here on this carbon. And it's a tertiary carbocation, which is very, very stable. All right. Now, uh, intramolecular um, reaction happens, and the electrons on the double bond form a bridgehead. In this case, they're at, uh, attacking from behind, so we have, uh, we have shown wedges, a wedge bridgehead. And then the carbocation forms here again. And again, uh, the enantiomer ana also forms. So now, <laughs> we have a carbocation on a tertiary uh, carbon, which is near a strained ring. So what's going to happen is a um, ring expansion, which... At first, we thought it was going to be this carbon bond that was going to expand like that. But that turns out to produce that product with the two methyls and the bridge head back here. But that shares three carbons, and our product only shares two. Um, so what turns out actually happening is this bond moves down here, um, and this carbon moves to this carbon, so it's pushed out of the ring. Um, this is a rearrangement that caused the car carbocation that, to go from a tertiary position to a secondary position, but since the ring strain is relieved, um, it happens anyway, even though the carbocation isn't supported enough. Is that good? Okay, so in the last step, um, the water is going to, by elimination, <laughs> the hydrogen is going to be taken off by the water, allowing for the electrons to move to form an alkene. And that's going to produce our second product, clovine. Thank <laughs> you.